Hi, I'm Tanaka Vandroff. I recently portrayed Mary Poppins in Mary Poppins the Musical with Olean Community Theater. And I'm here today at the Cuba Palmer Opera House to interview Michael Doyle on the history of the Opera House. President of Cuba Friends of Architecture. Uh, Cuba Friends of Architecture was the group that restored the Palmer Opera House. We welcome you here and we're going to show you around the uh, Palmer Opera House and the Cuban Jews Museum. So Mike, Michael, when was the Opera House built? Well, it's a, kind of a little bit of an interesting story because this Opera House that sits here today was uh, uh, began to be rebuilt in 1872. But there was a previous opera house here, and with most opera houses in America, the original ones were built out of wood, and of course they had lighting systems that were flammable and all kinds of other issues. So most of them burned down. I, mean, I think at one time there were 6,000 in the United States, but, and this one burned uh, in uh, late 1871. And uh, the firemen were so heroic in saving the other buildings that Palmer, he would uh, uh, build a newer, better opera house than had ever been here before. Now, who was Palmer? Palmer owned this building, as well as the buildings down the street here. There were the, there were a series of, of sons and fathers and sons. Uh, so Palmer was one of the original uh, sort of entrepreneurs in Cuba. Had uh, sawmills and various other uh, businesses, and and often what did happen is that uh, uh, those business owners built other things uh, because they had the funds to do it. And often uh, a place like this would have had a, sort of an event space but that was kind of like their, uh, their place to bring their friends. So obviously you were part of the group that wanted to restore the building. Now when was that and how long did it take to get the funds and all of that? Uh, I joined uh, Cuba Friends uh, around uh, 2005, 2006, and, and basically where this building began to transition was <clears throat> there were a group of us sitting on the bank across the street, the old building, the bank building, uh, and looking over here, this was really, you could tell, it was pretty dramatically bad shape, and uh, the conversation went like, well, somebody needs to do something about that, right. and, uh, and I remember saying, well, you know who that somebody is, right? Like, that's us. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is that group uh, uh, began to restore the building and the first thing was uh, to get the roof back on. So we had about a million dollars, mm -hmm. which any contractor would have said uh, that's not enough. And basically why it was enough was because we had good volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, we had great contractors, but if we hadn't had the volunteers, uh, we this this place is it's, it looks nice in here, mm -hmm. I mean, it's got, but there was no paint, no finish, no tile, no hardwood uh, in, a, in the original funds that we had. But uh, in here we've got a lot of uh, tile, things look really nice, mm -hmm. uh, all that was donated. Um, we saw down trees for lumber and all kinds of things to, to have enough mm -hmm. to, uh, to be able to do the building. So now all of these historical um, pieces, were these donated from people in the area, were they Yeah, pretty found? much the, the uh, uh, Cuba Cheese Museum existed as an entity on its own, but uh, it, as many museums do, was struggling. Well, Cuba Friends uh, realized that the Cheese Museum was really struggling. And so, uh, when the Cheese Museum was sort of at a point of great financial difficulty, uh, we said, well, you know, a good place for that cheese museum would be in the lobby of the uh, Palmer Arts House. Uh, the artifacts are here, and, uh, and we have quite a few more, and we have great plans, I think, to uh, do a lot of other kinds of uh, audiovisual and media things in here to uh, promote the, the cheese museum's uh, value as well. So, what can you tell us about the theater that was done here originally, um, anything else that was done here besides theater along the way? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it is kind of interesting. They called these buildings uh, opera houses, and it would be extremely rare that any opera ever occurred in most of them. Mm -hmm. 
but it was a word that was used uh, to describe a place that had some a little bit of class. It wasn't a bar, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, there would have been traveling shows that came through. I mean, there was a whole network and system uh, that is pretty much totally forgotten by America today. So, in here, there would have been a huge variety of things. Um, there would have been uh, uh, you know, travel logs. There would have been people who showed their uh, lantern slides, and this, and then there would have been people singing the next week. And then, of course, as uh, as time went by, uh, the technology changed things. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, silent movies came along, and, and so there was a lot of other silent movies were done here uh, for quite a while as well. Uh, kind of an interesting story about this is that we had planned on having a ticket window here. Uh, it was going to be a little glass kind of sliding back and forth window and we just had one made and all that. This window used to be in the Cuba post office and uh, one of the fellows down the street uh, uh, came to us one day and he said, I think I've got something you'd be interested in. Uh, he said, I've got the old post office uh, window. And we had already cut this opening in here and had uh, like a sheet of plastic over it uh, about three years prior to that time. We got that window from him, right at that opening. It's like just it unbelievable what would happen, you know. But uh, so there's been a lot of things like that, just sort of little serendipity kind of things that uh, are just fantastic. So it's here, it'll be here for uh, maybe another hundred years or so. Uh, otherwise, it probably would have just gotten tossed in the trash. But it's very important. Though. The interesting thing about this stairway is that uh, when you touch these beams. Uh, these uh, railings, uh, the balusters, the little posts and everything, uh, was, are made out of the beams that fell out of the roof of this building. So instead of just kind of disposing of them, uh, we took those beams to the Amish, sawed them up, took them to Alfred State College, and had them machined, brought them back here, and built this stairway. So it's kind of an interesting thing. These were up in the you know, very top of this building at one time, but uh, we, uh, we don't really throw many things away in this building. We recycle or repurpose them. So, yeah. so how many people does the house seat? Uh, we can seat, uh, uh, if people are friends with each other, uh, <laughs> uh, 240 is our maximum. Well, that's what our fire rating is. Uh, it's, it's kind of rare that we go over 200. Uh, there's about 200 seats set up in here right now, uh, so uh, it's comfortable in, in this seating. Is there anything interesting about the architecture and why this is upstairs rather than downstairs, things like that? Well, uh, I can I can say it's interesting to me being from Cuba originally uh, when I uh, used to walk down the street as a child here, uh, look up this building and I'd think, uh, gee, I wonder what's on the second floor or the third floor because it looked like you know there were multiple floors up here. No one ever said there was an opera house here. Uh, I don't think I ever knew there was until probably I was 60 or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, so it was, it was interesting that it was built this way. It just has a large volume. Uh, one thing that it has uh, is some fly space so you can if you need to, you need to fly some kind of scenery up. That was kind of rare, and a lot of them didn't have that. So uh, the building does have some unique features in that, in that sense. These are called the shoebox theater, and uh, they uh, project sound fairly well. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was almost too good when we uh, uh, first put this together. It would have been very hard to have a conversation like this because there was so much um, reverberation in here. Probably was good for people who were uh, individuals presenting, but uh, if you try to have a group or a chorus or something, it's just a little bit challenging. So we have done quite a bit to, to sound condition it. G37, that's John Gifford, that's my wife's uh, father, uh, who was injured and then died when she was about four years old in World War II. So there's a lot. These, this would have been kind of like the last class that was going to graduate out of this building because the new school was built in 39. <clears throat> so these would have been students who were in the old school, but this 
this was where they graduated from. This is where they did their plays. This is where they played basketball. All those kind of things happened in this building. So this was a, kind of like part of the school in some ways, you know, for much older shows. Uh, where uh, they had Wild West shows here, and they actually had uh, shooting going on up here. <laughs> they used a very, not, not a very powerful bullet, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, when during Reconstruction, we actually found some of the shell casings and cracks in the floor. Uh, it was kind of like this, uh, the guy was called Left Hand Charlie, the fastest snap rifle shooter in America or something <laughs> like that. And there would be uh, uh, Native American Indian uh, shows in here. So it's just really kind of a whole variety. It's too bad we didn't have videotape of all those days. <laughs> so what has this been used for in the most recent past? Well, I guess it depends on how recent in we're talking. In the past few years since I... Okay, well we had a lot of, uh, of local uh, panel, mm -hmm. local shows. Uh, we just had a, a 60s uh, show that was uh, uh, just a great success. There are about 200 people here for us. That's, oh, wow. that's a good thing. Uh, many other uh, sort of music uh, uh, events have been one of our primary things. Uh, of course, we've had uh, quite a number of uh, weddings here. I mean, it, of course, the whole theater gets uh, reset in mm -hmm. other pattern. Um, and uh, OCT has been here. Uh, yes. Yep. Um, I know we've done actually Grand Night. Uh, a Grand Night for Music, which is a musical review, Rogers and Hammerstein, and then we did a straight show, which we actually did in the round here, Love, Loss, and What I Wore. Um, coming up, we will be doing Ordinary Days, which is a four-person musical about life in New York City and building relationships with, you know, people and friends. Well, thank you, Michael, so much for the You're tour welcome. and the information. Uh, we will be taking you from the rooftops of London to the streets of New York in our show Ordinary Days, which is April 22nd at 7.30 p.m., April 23rd at 2 p.m. and 7.30, and April 24th at 2 p.m.